Joining us now, Virginia Senator Mark Warner, chair of the Intelligence Committee. You've worked so closely with Marco Rubio. He's been uh, the vice chair, but really much a partner of yours. Um, how do you assess him as the choice for Secretary of State? Well, Andrea, first of all, um, I don't get to make Trump administration personnel decisions, and, you know, the president-elect has still not uh, uh, put forward anybody's name. But if Marco is put forward as Secretary of State, I think it's a be a strong choice. Uh, he and I don't agree on a, a lot of things, but we've found, always found a way to work together. And I think most importantly, he knows and understands the absolutely critical role that our American leadership plays. And, Senator, what about China? Yes. Because he is considerably more hawkish, I think, than you are on China. Well, I think he's... Listen, we have... We've never faced a challenge like China where we have an economic competitor across so many technology domains. He may have gone further than, than I in certain areas, but I think having somebody that's vigilant against China's, you know, particularly technology uh, advancement that's direct competition to us, I think having that voice is important. And Senator Rubio is not the only, you know, choice that we've been talking about here today. A very surprising choice to a lot of people is Pete Hegseth of Fox uh, Fox News, uh, a television person more than anything else, Pete Hegseth for the, the, for the Pentagon. He is a military veteran from both Iraq and Afghanistan, but he's never managed an $800 billion budget or a million three, you know, active duty forces. Yeah. Andrea, you know, I respect uh, this gentleman's you know, service, and I know he's been a decorated veteran, but... You know, I've been to the Pentagon many times. It takes it takes a while to find the bathroom. You're talking about the largest workforce in America, and that's just with the official Pentagon employees. You've also got all of the, the contractor community to throw someone in with no management experience into this enterprise, particularly if on one hand you've got other folks in the Trump orbit talking about bringing government efficiency. You know, I'm going to meet the guy, uh, and I'll make an assessment, but I, that's an awful big hill to climb because I don't understand how that corresponds with trying to have somebody that's uh, uh, going to bring efficiency to the government. What about the choice of John Ratcliffe for CIA? I worked with uh, John Ratcliffe when he was DNI. I even supported him for that position. Uh, well, initially, I did not. Uh, but CIA is, I've got some questions. Uh, you know, I respect uh, Radcliffe's service, uh, but I'm going to have some important questions before I weigh in on, on uh, his nomination for CIA director. And Special Counsel Jack Smith is going to resign, we are told, before Donald Trump can fire him, uh, issuing a report. But a source familiar with the matter tells us that we can expect to see that report from Jack Smith. Um, what's your reaction to that being the outcome? Of course, the well, Supreme Court's immunity decision um, you know, put a cold stop yeah, <laughs> and slowed down I, I that mean, prosecution. Andrea, who I, you know, I wish. I think for the American people, it would have been good to go ahead and litigate this so this cloud is not overhanging. I wish, you know, in retrospect, obviously, this could have been moved quicker, but I'm not surprised at all. Uh, in light of the immunity decision that Jack Smith is going to finish his job and get out of Dodge or get out of that position before Donald Trump comes in, doesn't surprise me at all. And we also know that there's a new ambassador chosen for Israel subject to confirmation, and that is Mike Huckabee, who has said that um, he's in favor of annexation of the West Bank and uh, has some notable views on that, as well as Steve Whitkoff, a real estate guy and a head of the inaugural committee, a big Trump friend and golf partner and donor, to be the new envoy, the new diplomat to the Middle East. Uh, well, what, Mr. What Whitkoff, I don't, I don't, yeah, Mr. Whitkoff, I don't know. Actually, Mike Huckabee and I work closely together. Uh, when we are both heads of the National Governors Association. I've known him a long time, uh, like him interpersonally. Um, I don't know how you get the geopolitical movement that I think we would all like to see in the Middle, Middle East where Saudi Arabia, the Emiratis, and others, I think are ready to kind of uh, come into more alliance with us and Israel, if at the same time you're snuffing out any opportunity for a Palestinian state. I don't know how those are ever reconcilable. And if that's why we, you know, Israel has been, uh, you know, 
remarkable in terms of particularly taking out Hezbollah, you know, but we need to get to a ceasefire so that we can start to have that realignment. I think a lot of that goes off the table if you suddenly see a full annexation of the West Bank. And instead of a ceasefire, which was called on again today by Secretary Blinken in Brussels at NATO, we're seeing increasing uh, Israeli attacks in northern Gaza, a humanitarian crisis, according to the UN. But the administration uh, pulled back in, on its threat, really, to start pulling back weapons, according to the Lay Act. Just yesterday, when that deadline came and, and, and went, they're not going to cut off any any weapons, they say that Israel is making, quote, progress. Listen, I've not seen the full report. I want to look at this. You know, but I think the notion that you're going to wipe out entirely a Hamas organization down to the last fighter when, frankly, new fighters will spring up, this has always been a bit of the contradiction on the Israeli objectives and why I think, you know, when we had a bit earlier to we were so close so many times. I think Bill Burns, the current CIA director, ought to get a, you know, get at least a prize for his efforts, where we were close to bringing back those hostages and bringing a ceasefire. Because we've got to make a transition. Again, part of the, the role of rebuilding Gaza, I do think entities like the Emiratis, the Gulf states, the Saudis, we can ask and demand for them to do more in helping rebuild Gaza. But you've got to have a cessation of hostilities. And also, finally, your reaction to Senator Thune as the new Senate Majority Leader. I've worked with John Thune on a lot of things, even like the, our, our first TikTok bill together. Um, again, I don't agree with John Thune on everything, and, and he's you know, going to have to work. He's got a, a challenge to work with the president-elect and, and his caucus. But the thing about John Thune is you know, he's partisan, but he's, he's always a decent guy. And that, I think, kind of... You know, basic decency is something that um, I imagine will be tested, uh, but I'm, I'm looking forward to working with him.